Hey, my name's Francis and welcome to Stories and Sound. Today we feature the cinematic indie rock band Date Month Year from Hamilton. We talk about the band, the creative and musical ethos, the blending of the audiovisual world and much more. We also feature acoustic performances of their songs South, Icarus, March and Numbers. So, if you enjoy it, please let us know and keep an eye out for future episodes. Cheers. Let's start out with like, who you guys are, who is sort of Date Month Year and individually introduce yourselves. Okay, uh, I'm Haley, and I play bass for Date Month Year. And I'm Trevor, and I, I hit things for Date Month Year. <laughs> and I'm Tyler, and I play a bit of guitar. I'm Brooke, and I do lead vocals and rhythm guitar. Nice. And anyone want to take away with uh, sort of who is Date Month Year? What is Date Month Year? I probably should. Yeah. Because um, yeah. <laughs> I'm CEO and founder. It's been, it's been around for a while. And initially it was it was a, a challenge I set myself about recording songs um, because in my day job I was a music teacher, so the idea was if you're going to be making students write and record their own stuff, you should be doing the same thing. Yeah. And it evolved from that, really. And so the first non-recorded thing we did some time ago, and we've just recorded and gagged, and the whole thing has just simply evolved and uh, won't die. So it's like yeah. despite how much you try, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, tried once, but it wouldn't it wouldn't last. Wouldn't go so away. Wouldn't go away. So yeah. we're stuck with it, and that's where it is now. Yeah, nice. What what does the sort of, I guess, what does the name, I guess, mean as far as where you initiated with it, and oh, sort of where yeah. is it kind of, or if it's grown into meaning something different now? <laughs> the name I got from a hospital admissions form. <laughs> you know, when you sign your name, it was like name, address, a date of birth, date, month, year. Yeah. Literally that. Yeah. Um, and I just stuck it together and, got, and that sounds suitably random. Yeah. And that was the, basically the plan, suitably random. Yeah, yeah. Which would have been a better name now that I think about it. Yeah, that's good. Suitably random. Next but album, perhaps. That can be yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah that, that's where the name came from. Yeah, yeah. Have you felt like it's sort of taken on any other meanings as it's sort of gone on or is it just sort of something you've just sort of linked with it all? Not to me. I don't know whether yeah. you, um, you guys think anything different, but it's just it's not three random words chucked together. Yeah. I mean, it's a band name now, though. Yeah, yeah right? it's true. Like it represents the band. So. It does. Yes, yeah. it's become a thing of identity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Americans can't get their head around it. <laughs> no. It's, 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 there, it's the other way around. Maybe it's a little it subtle jab at them as well. <laughs> it wasn't intended that way. But, it's, it's it's but a, they are wrong. Yeah, let's get that clear. Yeah. Um, what's the sort of, because I know sort of, it seems like it's the, the sort of the band as a whole has kind of been approached with quite a global kind of idea of just being quite just experimental as far as times, yeah. in terms of, not just in terms of music, but in terms of sort of how you approach the idea of music in modern industry kind of thing. What would you sort of say some of the, I guess, themes that you guys try and sort of implement into the into the music and into performance and things like that. I can add one. Well, I can start. Mm. Uh, it's mm. about um, independence. It's the crucial element, as far as I'm concerned, it's about independence. So it's about that simple thing: is that, that, that it's a self-contained unit, and the songs that are written are the songs that are written. Uh, end of. Yep. So the, the various considerations, perhaps, that the industry might put on, uh, totally we totally ignore. Totally ignore. Um, and that same thing goes for processes. So there's ways of doing things. So, like, for example, if we want to uh, do the whole thing as an acoustic set, we will do that. Yeah. If we want to do movie soundtracks, we will do that. You know, it's, uh, it's as simple as that. Whatever the group decides to do, yeah. that's going to happen. Yeah, so it's definitely what, whatever you guys feel like at the time. You just sort of let it, mm. let it happen kind of naturally. It's not sort of guided towards anything in particular. It's sort of just let it naturally evolve. Mm. There's also a kind of unwritten rule of like nothing too normal or mainstream. So like no soppy love songs. <laughs> As you look at our music, you'll have to work really hard to find to anything find the soppiness. Soppy. Yeah. So it's kind of lots of our songs are open to interpretation. And so that means that like you'll hear someone who's like, I love this song and it means this to me and you're like Cool. Very different yeah. to what it might yeah. have meant to someone else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's well, something that sort of, has, have you had any sort of particular experience with that where someone's come in and said, 
it seems this to me it means this or what's the yeah, sort of story like, um, I saw one song that we have is called March and um, it became evident that a reviewer had thought that it was about like marching the act of like you go on a march or like you protest and you march yeah but we like I don't know about everyone else but I was thinking about the month of the year <laughs> Which is very different, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, there's just stuff like that where, like, we'll have titles that are ambiguous or, like, not the key, like, phrase of the, of the chorus, song. say. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I know when I started playing with that month here, I was like, okay, that song, that, the title that you just said, how does it go? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to kind of Don't connect know the them names, initially. just know the music. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said a look at your... Um, TED Talk that you guys did, oh, um, yeah. and a really like a cool concept that I that you sort of that you brought up um, sort of when you did your little spiel with it um, was in regards to sort of redefining what success actually is oh, as far yeah. as in in modern industry where it kind of is especially in popular music governed by by numbers hmm. as far as listens money yep. um, followers all that sort of stuff sort of what I guess and towards answering that sort of idea, what would you guys sort of be as, see as your idea of success in terms of music? Um, and what are some of the goals that you guys have as far as for for date month year? The element of success is but it's defined by what you set when you set out to do it. I think that's basically what I was trying to say. Was that in that TED talk? It was like if you define it, if you let someone else define your standards of success, you're not going to succeed. So the simple thing, that the initial thing was to record a five-song EP. That was the, so did that pay for it, you know, self-funded, no record label, boom. So by definition, that was success. Criteria was set, we did it. Mm. Um, doing this, coming here and doing this, set the criteria, right, we'll do, we'll do the acoustic set. Cool, we just did it, success. You know, and if mm. you have that, I think if you have that sort of mindset, then... Um, because everything's internal, then then people look at it and go, cool. You know, they, they can yeah. sort of respond to it to a, a, a bunch of people who are doing it their way for their own standards and for their own reasons. And you're welcome to be part of it, but you know, it, it doesn't matter. resonate with, with yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and, and sort of as far as I guess date month is concerned, what are some sort of goals going forward that you guys have sort of got? So you're saying like before it's been like a five song EP, what's sort of the the next thing that you guys have set in terms of a goal as a band? Well, we've just reorganised the live lineup, And so the plan, big part of the plan is to, for this incarnation, if you will, to be playing live. Yeah. Um, which is something of a challenge at the moment. At the moment but, yeah. um, you know, we work really hard on it and, and the live set is ready to go. Yeah. And we've tried it a couple of times and it's, it's really great. It's enjoying it a lot. Yeah. So that's probably the big goal. Yeah. Just get out there playing. Yep. Yeah. And even just being adaptable, like um, we're really aware that um, there's if you if you only play a certain way, you're only able to do it in a like often there's a specific arena where it's gonna work. Um, but like we've got a live set that's electric, which is really adaptable to be able to do acoustically. And so the songs have just such great bones that we can easily alter how we deliver them yeah, yeah. Um, and they still translate really nicely so maybe people who wouldn't want to come and see us play on a Friday night in a pub like full noise kind of thing yeah right? um, they can still like see us perform in a different context or hear us um, and enjoy the songs and connect with them mm. and it's like the music is winning yeah yeah and that's kind of like a hallmark of good songs being able to be Adaptable, so the song itself can change from this full noise electric thing to an acoustic, really cut down rendition and still work as a song. Mm. That's just definitely like a, a testament to. I, I'd see it as a testament to the songwriting as a whole. Mm. It's a different yeah. experience as well. I reckon our acoustic, like the live and the acoustic, they're still both really good sets, but separately they're two very different things as well. It's not just like you're playing the same song acoustically or electrically. They're very different, like. Even coming in today, I barely kind of recognized one song that I like kind of messed up one of my parts because I completely forgot that I had to do something. So I think like 
having the different experiences is really cool as yeah. well. Keeps it interesting for, yeah. for you guys, so you're not kind of, doesn't end up being a rinse repeat situation mm. with, with mm -hmm. some of the songs you've been playing for a few years or something like that. Mm, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, how did the band, as it stands today, all sort of end up coming together? I recruit people. Yeah. Um, well, I'm basis number 14. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do you, have the, do you have the number tattooed on the back of your neck? <laughs> I should. <laughs> but I don't want someone else to come in and then get another tattoo. Yeah. You know, I want to be the last tattoo. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah it's, it is. It's a huge number, isn't it? It uh, really I, is. Um, not you really intentional. Think about yeah. It. It's, it's a bit spinal tap now you think about it. <laughs> um, I, I recruit. So people, it's a, that sounds awful when I say it that way, but, but the idea is people contribute for as long as they feel capable of doing so. That's really what it comes down to. Yep. And I'll always be doing music as Tate Monthly, always. That's the deal. And so uh, the, the key element is to get the key people involved and the people involved make the music and the music happens and that's why it changes. And that's good. Yeah, yeah. And that's basically how it happens from, from my angle. Yeah. So if it was me uh, banging a rubbish bin lid and whistling, well, then that's what it'll be. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not planning on that. But yeah. We could yeah. add it though. Yeah. Yeah. We could make it happen. That's what's going to happen. It's Wait till you have a bit of a breakdown and just <laughs> see what comes. <laughs> but it's all—it's always good. I mean, and there, there are key elements that people have to have. Like, um, it's a, it's a well, like we all read music, for mm. example. So when Ali was joining, all the bass parts were written down. So here it is, you know, yep. and that's that's mm. a, a key thing because if you can, you don't have to be a world's greatest sight reader, but able to work it out. Yeah, I think it's a key thing. Well, I learned all the songs you gave me before I'd even practiced yeah. with the whole. So w the first time I practiced, I was just able to do it. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was there wasn't cool. as much sort of like trying to figure no, it out. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can kind of slot in pretty easy. Yeah. 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 And sort of how did these relationships develop and start and sort of how did you get to the point of recruiting them? I talk to people I trust and yep. work with people I trust and uh, <laughs> had relationships with all these people through education. Yeah. Um, and lots of people I've tried to work with in the past, you know, the people of my own age, for example, frequently have their own way of communicating, their own way of doing things, not necessarily in a positive way. So I, I, it's crucial for me to, to make music with the people I trust. So it comes through that way, and so I trust these people. Yeah. And But, you know, everyone has been before has also been that same situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I don't think anyone's ever left maybe one or two in a, in, a, in a situation, maybe one. Yeah. Um, but everybody else is just part of the, part of what's been done, and then they move on, and that's all the good. natural sort of progression. Yeah. yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been very good like that. Yeah, but that's the key element for me. You know, trying to put people together. It's about people I can trust, people I can mm. work with. Yeah, and as far as sort of, I don't know, getting into music a bit more individually, sort of, how did you sort of develop at least that initial taste to want to be able to perform and sort of get into learn it from 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 each year? Um, well, my dad used to play guitar a lot, and so kind of throughout my childhood, that was all just kind of what I did. And then I did, I think my biggest influence from music was I did samba percussion for like seven or eight years in Hamilton. And so that really kind of, really kind of resonated with me and having those like rhythms and all that kind of stuff. And that kind of, I think, translates a bit into the way that I see music and the way that I play music. So that's kind of like a big thing that sort of got you for me. Time. But also I was just like a real, I was an emo kid, you know, the My Chemical Romance yeah. and Green Day and all that kind of stuff. So I had my my Metallica style ESP electric guitar that I'd play in my bedroom. So, you know, just yeah. teenager things. Yeah. And then Trevor asked me to join the band and then I was like, sure, like, why not? I actually hadn't touched my bass guitar in a couple of years Yeah. when he asked me and he was like, hey, do you still play bass? And I was like, can do. Yeah, yeah I still play bass. <laughs> and so yeah, awesome. and here we are. And, yeah. yeah. I, I hear music in my head. And I always have, even when I was a kid. So that's, that's how I started, um, simply because I can hear music now. It constantly plays and sometimes it's stuff I've written and sometimes it's not. So um, <laughs> doing music was just a kind of like really a, a thing that never went away. And so I've stuck at it forever. Yeah. And that's pretty much how I get started, really. Yeah. You're just constantly hearing it and you're just like, well, Always, yeah. now so let's dream it create it. Yeah. Yeah. No, awesome. <laughs> Does that get sort of overwhelming at times or mm. no? Nah? No. <laughs> I was re reflecting on that the other day. and Does it ever make you nuts? Nope. 
uh, it just it's just what happens. Yeah. It's um, yeah. just is what it is, kind of thing. It, yeah, pretty much. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I just um, I just had good parents and good music tastes. Really, <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Two different yeah. backgrounds. Yeah. That really was really it. Does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dad was into weird glam rock and shit like that, and <laughs> Mum was into normal seventies pop popular music, and it kind of just all blended. And I found my own road, and then yeah. Like, you need to learn an instrument. Okay, cool, done. And I just picked up a guitar and then, yeah, got professional tuition for a number of years and then, um, of course, went through high school. Um, and Trevor taught me through there and, um, yeah, that's about it, really. It's, it's, yeah, just guitar. Yeah. Loving it. Yeah, me. Um, yeah, I was a little musical kid as well. <laughs> uh, I started reading music when I started to learn how to read and write, so oh. I'm really aware that it's this... It's freakish in some circles, but like I feel like it's a real advantage in other ways. Um, like a second language. Yeah, mm. yeah, or well, just the first language. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I l learned instruments from like five, um, but they're all solo instruments, and I never had that drive to really be like the, the diva and just be like me on a stage. Like yeah. I've always felt more comfortable in an ensemble um, and being an instrumentalist, I did that kind of growing up and played in concert bands and whatnot. And I, um, when I learned to play the guitar, I remember um, like singing, cause you know, you're singing whatever pop song um, mm. and playing along. And I remember like someone had a remark like, okay, yeah, you should keep playing the guitar. <laughs> like, you know, the uh, vocals are not so great. Um, but it turns out that the vocals, it's just another instrument. And if you practice and mm. if you learn, you can get better. Um, so yeah, I think that's like that's a big takeaway for me that I wanna I wanna break any myths that yeah. like vocalists are born with with it with mm -hmm. it yeah and it just yeah. comes like not by any stretch yeah um, yeah so uh, when I realised that actually making music in a group setting totally was a lot easier and more fun and more engaging for me that really shifted everything for me. No, that's awesome. Mm. I think it's a good point here to, to go into the first song. So what's the first song that sort of people are going to hear and tell us a little bit about it. Should we use South? South. Mm. We'll use South, the song. South, um, I have to answer that because I wrote the words. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wonderful samba. Sorry, not a samba. It's a bossa nova feel song and uh, the, the lyrics are interpreted, uh, sometimes people look at it as being quite dark, I don't think it's being quite dark at all, it's just basically, uh, it's a dream I had once and that's pretty much the song uh, and that's it, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, and so in terms of the dream itself? Um, it was just me talking to my mother okay. and she was saying everybody's eating South except you. And I have no idea what that means at, at all. But that's that's the basic line in the song. That's what's uh, everybody's heading south except yeah. me. Awesome. And what does it mean? Don't know. <laughs> but it doesn't matter either. It's just yeah. a phrase that sits well. So yeah. Cool. Nice. Well, let's check it out.
get me And the railway lines know There's no trains left to go